Now. So, hello, this is Group 6, presenting the change in the automotive industry and whether Apple should hand enter this and has a chance there. So, the problem in general is, is the automotive industry an attractive industry for Apple to enter? Second, should Apple launch an Apple car? And third, how to frame this automotive um, opportunity? In the strategic analysis, our outcome was, the automotive industry is very attractive. There's a high degree of innovation, which is in compliance with Apple's vision. However, Apple should not launch a vehicle. They just don't have the know-how and capacities to do that. Third, um, they should enter as an automotive supplier for autonomous driving systems, or for connectivity, or for the interior, for example, human-machine interface, displays, compare it to tablets. They have the know-how. So, First, we would like to begin and say how will the future of the automotive industry be. It's four main major changes. The automotive industry will be connected. By 2030, 100% of all new cars are supposed to be connected uh, compared to only 25% of the cars produced today. This will lead to car makers that must transform in mobility service provider. A car is like a machine, it's an IoT device, like a smartphone, like a tablet. There will be data gathered, um, it will, there will be an experience for the drivers. So the car is changing. It is not a vehicle anymore that's just for moving around. It is rather for ent entertainment, um, for doing things in there. People can sleep if the cars are autonomous. Uh, and then it's shared. Um, 32% of the distance driven by 2030, 2030 is um, supposed to be shared. Like for example, Uber now is um, already providing shared rides, but it's just a really small market share. This, however, will change. Therefore, the car manufacturers or other companies, tech companies, must do heavy investments in shared vehicle fleets to provide these mobile services. Third, the cars are supposed to be autonomous, or at least a big part of it. 10 to 15% of newly produced vehicles, let it be um, passenger cars or trucks, are supposed to be autonomous. However, there will be still be like a lot of the old um, automobiles um, and also some not um, autonomous cars being produced. Um, therefore, um, the technology for autonomous vehicles must be owned. Question is by who? Will it be the car manufacturers? Will it be technology companies? Will it be startups? And last but not least, the cars are supposed to be electric. There's already quite a big market share today. However, already by 2025, which means in seven years from now, um, the cars which are electric are supposed to be more than five times higher worldwide. Um, this means a rapid change in development, manufacturing lines must be changed. They, it's not the classical engine anymore, which was very complex. It is a battery and an electric engine that was, will be assembled. And furthermore, also the branding is important. As we see today, for example, with Tesla, if you think of autonomous uh, uh, electric cars, um, you basically think of Tesla. Nobody thinks of the old manufacturers. You don't think of a Toyota or a VW. So here we have listed current and future players. Some of them already heavily involved in the market, some are just starting. The established players are, for example, Toyota, Ford or Mercedes, among many others we know and see around on our daily streets. Also, they are changing, but slowly. They are still, um, let's say, very traditional competitors in um, this industry. And they cannot keep the speed up compared to new entrants, for example, Biden, Tesla or Karma with Tesla being the most advanced in this field. Um, yeah, we see Teslas everywhere. Um, they're driving around, they're still facing production problems, but in the end, they're supposed to be the electric car. Um, whereas Biden and Karma, they, are not yet, they, ha they have not yet launched a serious car, but it's not far from that. Biden, for example, is supposed to launch a serious car already by next year in China and in the US. Uh, these companies, um, they are already seeing the vehicles um, rather as an entertainment device and not only focused on moving around. A bit different from the established players 
and therefore they are all the car itself look, looks completely different. If you, for example, sit in a Tesla, you have a big screen in the middle. Biden takes this to another level. You have a huge screen which reaches from the driver to the passenger side. Uh, then another category of established players are automotive suppliers. This is, for example, Bosch and ZF, both from, both from Germany. Uh, they are also heavily investing in autonomous driving technologies. They have products on the market, for example, a lane assist, highway assist, and automated parking assist. Uh, but yeah, let's see. They are probably not as far advanced as other companies on the field of uh, uh, AI, so on machine learning, which is definitely required for um, uh, for future applications like autonomous driving. And there come the technology companies into play. They have a lot of know-how on AI machine learning. They have huge budgets because of big profits. Um, and here, for example, already these companies entered the automotive industry, starting with Microsoft. They are mainly focusing on um, cloud providing with their Microsoft Azure, Azure Cloud, which is um, an IoT cloud. And they are already on the market. They have partnerships with many of the established um, players. Think, for example, Toyota or VW. They have heavy investments. It's like it's um, projects worth billions. Then we have Baidu from China, so the big um, competitor of Google. Um, Baidu is already heavily investing in research. They don't have yet products, though. Uh, they are mainly focusing on autonomous driving. Then. Last but not least, we have a very important player, Google, with Vimo, its brand for its autonomous research division. Um, they are supposed to be the most far advanced. Uh, they are mainly focusing on autonomous driving. Uh, there is already, uh, in California, they have set up many projects, among others, um, but they have the most autonomous miles driven, and they recently passed 10 million autonomous miles. So they have gathered a lot of data, uh, a lot of practical experience. They are not yet that close to serious. It's still a bit, it's like huge amounts of data they need to gather, but at some point they will make it. Um, so let's see where this goes. They are probably, um, this category is probably very a very hard competitor, especially for autonomous, uh, automotive suppliers. And then we have another segment, which is ride sharing providers. Uh, there is, for example, Uber and Lyft uh, in the US, Uber uh, being the bigger one. They are also testing a lot um, of autonomous driving. Uh, they, are, they, are also, they have test vehicles on the street. They equip vehicles of other established players. Um, and then they basically do similar tests as Vimo. Um, however, they are not as far advanced. But let's see, there's many established players investing, for example, in Uber to bring the technology forward. And then we have the counterpart from China, which is Didi Chuxing. Um, they basically have the same model. They also provide ride-sharing services, and with the game money and also from funding rounds, they invest in autonomous driving. So let's see where that takes us. And that is where Apple comes into play. Very similar to the other technology companies. Uh, we have um, separated um, Apple's um, automotive know-how in um, three categories. First, products and services, which they already offered, offer and which can be applied to automotive. Then, second, know-how. What know-how have they gathered in research and development or with traditional products, which can be applied to automotive. And then the next category, they are already involved in automotive. So, as per the products and services, there is Apple Music, um, which we all know we, we have it on everyday devices, smartphone, uh, computers, um, which provides music services. So um, I think there's even already cars which have Apple Music equipped and so that they can basically stream all the music provided there. So this is definitely a nice application. Then an app store, uh, not yet applied in the vehicle directly. Um, however, later on, once cars become entertainment devices, uh, it will definitely be required to install apps for different things let it be for working or for um, fun. Then uh, another big segment is iPhone, iPad and computers. Um, this means there is experience as per the user interface, um, experience on um, how to 
put programs on uh, microcontrollers and let them run. Um, and also to give the user an experience. Uh, and there is iCloud. Um, basically, for now, the main focus of iCloud is rather on uh, private customers to upload media, documents, and stuff like this. And it's less targeting um, the business sector, like compared to, for example, Amazon. Um, they have a heavy cloud um, targeting companies um, to upload their daily data they gather. So this might, must be transformed a bit, but still there is know-how on how to store data in clouds. Um, then, uh, with the know-how coming from like the iCloud, cloud applications are known. It is known how to connect devices. All computers, tablets, they are all connected. And also in the future, cars must be connected. Um, for example, for autonomous driving, it is most likely that also the cars must interact with one another and transfer data. For example, if there's an accident, if there's a lane close, things like this. And on the other hand, also um, the communication with the infrastructure is important. For example, depending on how the software is implemented, whether it like detects traffic lights or whether it will just be communicated when the cars shall stop. Then we have AI and machine learning, a major element for future applications, especially autonomous driving. Um, Apple and the other Silicon Valley companies like Google and Microsoft, they are the most far advanced in terms of research for AI and machine learning. Then batteries. Although Apple is not manufacturing them on their own, they know battery management. They know how to put it in devices safely that nothing happens, which is very important in a car. Um, so this, if we regard Apple as a car manufacturer, they have the know-how how to put batteries in and how to operate them. Then, coming from iPhone, iPad and computers, there is experience on operating systems um, and also user experience. So it is known how to operate programs on the devices and how to, um, how to like put them so that the user enjoys the experience and that it is nice and user friendly. And they, there is know-how and how to manufacture devices. It is mainly outsourced, but still the know-how is there. So if, let's say, Apple provides some hardware product or a car, there is, although different, but there is still some know-how on how to do manufacturing. And then the third category, uh, we have CarPlay, which is already in many, many vehicles, which are currently being produced. It is um, a software for connecting your device with the vehicle and then it will show you all the apps um, from your mobile device and then it's basically possible to use for example Apple Music to um, call people um, or to use other apps. During driving certainly the driver is not allowed to use entertainment apps but for example um, uh, when the vehicle is standing there is certainly the possibility to also access other apps. Once there is autonomous driving Certainly, the driver can make use more features of this software. Then, there is Project Titan. Apple is since 2014 involved in autonomous driving research. And maybe among other things, um, it is very, very unknown what else they are doing, but definitely autonomous driving. So there is some know-how already there, but it's, at least it's not known whether they are as far as, for example, Google or Uber. Um, however, as there is not that many tests done on public roads, it can be assumed that Apple is far behind. Then there is a partnership with VW. This is basically the first tests um, that we got to know of, which are really done on roads. Um, there is VW buses equipped with Apple software, some hardware, also batteries. Um, and they shall be um, used as an autonomous shuttle between different sites within the Silicon Valley. And then in um, 2016, Apple made a major investment of $1 billion in the um, Chinese river rival, um, Didi Chuxing. So they are already um, trying to get involved in ride-sharing services. Um, so they have major influence in this company, and therefore there's the know-how exchange, and yeah, let's see where that partnership can take Apple. Um, down here, you basically see summarized the inferences I made on how to um, connect these products or know-how or um, the automotive know-how to 
we apply MV equals. So, coming to Apple's vision and mission. Uh, it is certainly important that future projects and products that Apple will release are compliant with the mission and vision because uh, it must not be risked risk that the um, brand of Apple will be damaged. The mission. Um, they want to deliver the best computers and professional software, whereas vehicles will also be computers in the future, or already are. Uh, they are, were a major part and are a major part in the digital music revolution, starting with iTunes and now continuing with um, uh, iMusic. Um, then they reinvented the mobile phone already, uh, and they are keeping to continue to do so. They, they are always the first among the market to introduce new features and the competitors are mainly behind and releasing the same or similar features later on. And then they want to define the future of mobile media and computing devices, which are also in future cars. Cars are mainly uh, moving computing devices. Coming to their vision, uh, they focus on constantly innovating. They want to be always among um, the first companies to um, develop new products, new services, um, and yeah, especially very innovative one. They can be very, very complex. Apple is not um, scared of taking such a challenge. Uh, they want to own and control the primary technologies behind their products, um, which means they um, don't want to rely on suppliers which have major know-how uh, or did major development. This doesn't mean that they outsource, for example, production. If, if they have all the research know-how know -how, how the devices operate, and if they basically contract um, a manufacturer um, as a service provider, this is okay. But they don't want to give away or, be, um, re, uh, or rely on know-how of other companies. Uh, furthermore, Apple wants to participate in markets only if there's a major contribution. This means they want to have a big market share and they also want to have a big share within revenues. Um, for example, with, uh, with the iPhone, they have only 20% or what, oh, not only, it's, it's a lot, they have 20% of market share in terms of units sold. However, there is um, around 50% market share in terms of revenue because the um, average device sold is around $600 US dollar more expensive than um, Samsung. So there we see the difference. Um, it will be interesting, the automotive industry is, in terms of automotive manufacturers, very segmented. Uh, in terms of automotive suppliers, not. Um, there is less supplier, less bigger suppliers, so there is bigger market shares. However, on the other hand, um, the revenues or profits are a bit smaller compared to what Apple is used to. They have gross margins of around 40% with um, some devices like the iPhone. Uh, furthermore, Apple wants to focus only on a few important projects. So they don't want to be compared like to other automotive suppliers. Um, they deliver basically a broad range of products everywhere in the car, which means it's several different, a lot of different projects. It's like hundreds sometimes because basically every single um, computing circuit in the car, in the vehicle, is a known project. Um, so they rather want to deliver a few products, but they shall be excellent. Therefore, they want excellence in every group of the company. Um, they don't want to be like a low-cost manufacturer that delivers a product which is okay but not perfect. No, they want to be, however more expensive, but they want to have the best product in the market. Then we had a quick SWOT analysis of Apple. Um, what is the strength, what are the strengths, the weaknesses, what are the opportunities for Apple? However, also what are threats for them? Uh, strengths are definitely the innovation in technology. They are definitely among the few companies which are the best in innovating new, new, uh, new technologies and new services. They have a huge financial strength. Uh, I think in terms of dollars, it is, they have stored around $600 billion around the world. Um, it's not all um, 
in the UF. So there is like tax barriers, but due to recent tax reforms, they were starting to get the money back. So they are definitely liquid and can finance major projects. They have a high reputation of product, product quality um, for business to customer sales. Um, this is also later on a threat um, because it is possible to da damage the brand. But starting, the Apple brand is really strong and when entering a new market, the reputation is really, really high, especially in terms of excellence and quality. That's then the brand awareness and also customer loyalty. There's, for example, for the iPhone, there are so many people that only rely on the iPhone once they have had one. There's not many people buying an iPhone, buying a different device and maybe then switching back to the iPhone, no. If you're an Apple user, you like it. And you're not only loyal to one product, many of the Apple users, they own iPhones, uh, tablets and also iMacs. Uh, the compatibility is definitely a strength. Um, all the products, the tablets, the iPhones, they can all communicate with one another. They are compatible um, to one another, which is also a strength in terms of um, vehicles. If, if they would produce vehicles or systems in ve within vehicles, it, they have a lot of know-how on how to connect and make it compatible to their current products. Um, furthermore, there's some customer relations due to CarPlay, um, which is definitely a strength. So they have some reputation in the automotive industry. However, it is a comparable, very small product within if you if you look take a look at the whole vehicle. Coming to the weaknesses, there is not that many strong partnerships in automotive. There's CarPlay, but but still compared to like an automotive supplier, um, they are weak. Automotive, the big automotive suppliers, which we have seen before, um, they have basically relationship to more than a hundred automotive mobile manufacturers usually. Um, and it's like not for one product and not for one small product like CarPlay, but for major products, for engine control units, for advanced driver system systems, it's huge. And therefore there's also a really big trust between the automotive manufacturer and their suppliers. Um, another weakness is um, they, are, they have currently these high margins, which are amazing for um, the stability of the company. Um, and they are unlikely to keep the same margins within the automotive industry um, because yeah, it's quite um, price um, uh, com compatible. So um, um, yeah, p the companies fight for lower prices. There is a premium segment, but it is small. However, coming to opportunities, um, there is a growing support of, from the government, especially for electric vehicles. Um, there is incentives um, paid from the government to customers who buy newly manufactured electric vehicles. Um, so now would be the time to hop on this train and um, to give the customer even more incentives to buy their cars. Uh, the automotive industry is undergoing massive changes. It is various ideas how the um, how, how a car shall look like in let's say 20 years, but however nobody really knows. So there is still room to shape this room to shape the future of a car, um, in which Apple is really good. They have shown with their iPhone they can reshape an existing product really well and establish themselves as a market leader. Um, next thing is auto AI. Um, is required for autonomous driving and as mentioned before they are really really knowledgeable on this topic. Um, another thing is vehicle connectivity. It would be probably a much easier task for Apple to enter than with autonomous driving. However also a, 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 smaller, a definitely way smaller market but they have a lot of know-how on how to connect the device which can be applied to vehicles. And there is a growing demand for car sharing. So, especially with autonomous cars, um, there will be major opportunities um, to become a service provider um, for taking people around. Uh, and then finally we have threats. So, um, if they would enter, there is really, really strong competitors. They are, from the financial perspective, 
not as powerful as Apple. However, the companies are big, the market is big. And if you, for example, compare it to Toyota, um, Toyota has huge revenues um, and VW also. Um, if you combine them, Apple looks small. Um, the low price vehicles have a huge market share, which doesn't really fit um, into Apple's mission. Uh, there is many startups entering the market. Uh, startups usually are, have a bit more freedom on how to operate, um, which means um, they can adapt much quicker than an established company like Apple could. Let's, so let's say if in terms, if there's like a fast new developments and fast acting of the companies required, these smaller startups might be able to act way faster. Um, and then uh, the last one is automotive company um, will prefer um, partnering up with traditional companies they work with, for example, the traditional suppliers. Um, they have a high trust because the relationship sometimes went on for 30 years, 30, 40 years, um, and they still kept together, avoiding other, of, as apart from these big old many, uh, automotive suppliers, they have avoided any other companies entering. So it will be tough to break these bonds. Coming to the strategic options and criteria. Um, first, up here we have the options and here is criteria. Um, starting with the options, Apple could become an automotive manufacturer and manufacture a car from scratch, like Tesla did. Um, Tesla achieved a lot. They have a, quite a high reputation in the automotive industry. Um, so it is not impossible, it just takes some time, taking in mind that Apple, Apple, uh, Tesla was founded in 2003, which means the company has been researching and developing since 15 years compared to Apple, which is already there for, since 2014. So they are a bit behind. However, thinking of this, they could acquire a manufacturer. We have seen Apple has huge financial assets. Um, it doesn't keep them from acquiring any company. Uh, they could probably acquire the biggest companies in, uh, in the automotive industry without any problems. Uh, and that would definitely give them an advantage. They're, they, there's no harm manufacturing, the production lines are set up. Um, you just gotta sh shape the future and set everything up for new technologies. Or a bit of cheaper option would be a joint venture. To, to make a joint venture with a um, previously established player, with um, the other player bringing in um, their know-how, their production capabilities, and Apple bringing in their know-how on smart devices, um, machine learning. So this might be quite a good fit. Or to end up as an automotive supplier. Um, this means, um, to, for example, supply the autonomous driving system um, and then basically charge the manufacturer, either one-time charge or service um, charge, um, for this um, autonomous software to use it. Um, there's definitely, there, there are several business models. Um, then for, um, for the criteria, we have three major categories. Uh, first, we have conditions. What are the conditions of Apple to enter this market? Uh, how does this comply with the mission and vision? Oops. Um, sorry, we jumped. Um, and their technological um, capabilities. Um, so what know-how do they have, for example? Starting with the conditions, what is the potential staff they have to um, R&D a vehicle and later on produce a vehicle? Um, for if they start to be an automotive manufacturer, they don't have any possible potential staff. They would need to hire a lot of people, open up new facilities, there it's not there. However, acquiring a manufacturer or joint venturing with one, it's all there. There is the production capabilities. So they would acquire the staff um, or in case of the joint venture, work together with the staff and it would be there. As an automotive supplier, however, um, if focusing especially on autonomous driving software, uh, there is not that many people required in order to develop such a software and bring it into Sirius. Uh, they have already hired a major amount of people from um, 
uh, traditional manufacturers or suppliers um, which have know-how, um, especially in autonomous driving. That's mainly where they have where they have hired um, a qualified person. From a financial assets point of view, it's quite simple. Apple has so much money, no matter which option to choose, they will be able to finance it. Uh, in regards of a similar business model to what they know, um, as an automotive manufacturer um, or an acquiring manufacturer or joint venturing, uh, it is quite similar to their original business models. They sell as a company to a customer directly a device. Um, so this is where they have their know-how in terms of marketing, um, ch channels might be a bit different, but still you need to target a, a, per a person to sell. As an automotive supplier, however, this is a B2B business. They will sell to other companies where Apple does not yet have that much know-how. They have some, with, for example, CarPlay, but there they would like learn, need to learn how to work together with the other companies, which are then their customers. And the last one is, is there a risk of brand damaging? When Apple becomes an automotive manufacturer and puts an Apple car into place or joint ventures and develops a car with an established player, there is definitely a, a possible possibility to damage the brand image. For example, if they deliver a car that is not living up to Apple's quality standards, if there's problems, for example, with um, burning batteries, which is quite possible with electric vehicles, that might seriously damage Apple's brand image of being excellent. On the other hand, as an automotive supplier, there's much less of a brand um, damaging um, risk. Uh, they, uh, they, they already, um, they are not, the brand is not on the vehicle itself, especially if they deliver software. Many customers won't even know of that. Uh, for example, with the current automotive suppliers, um, many people don't know where the software comes from, which is in the everyday vehicles, because a different brand from the automotive manufacturers is on top on the vehicle visible. Um, this might change a bit um, if Apple would start um, working in the interior, for example, supplying displays and operating systems. Uh, however, there Apple has so much know-how, if they choose the customers wisely, let's say usually premium um, customers, and if they then put their Apple logo um, on the screen or if it's like somewhere in the, in the vehicle, uh, there will not be a, much, much, a big risk of brand damaging because they know that business. Coming to the vision and mission, they want to innovate. In the automotive industry, there is so much innovation going on. It is changing so much. It's, it's incredible technology. Um, so no matter where they enter the market, whether they deliver a car or whether they just deliver a smart software, it is innovative. It is probably more innovative if um, focusing on autonomous driving, this is one of the latest trends, uh, compared to um, just being a supplier of displays or connecting vehicles. This is not as complex and not, and not as innovative. They want to own the primary technologies. Uh, they don't want to be dependent on other companies in terms of know-how, uh, which they do. Uh, if they are an automotive manufacturer or acquire manufacturer, um, to some extent, depending on how much they um, produce by themselves. Let's say, for example, if they uh, rely on automotive suppliers for really complex products uh, and there is not much of a choice, they will be, uh, re have to rely on these companies, which they don't want, but they have like some room to steer it. However, in a joint venture, they definitely do not own the primary technologies. It's split up between Apple and another company and then also the automotive suppliers come in. Uh, so this is um, definitely not compliant with Apple's mission and vision. Um, as a supplier, um, they could for sure deliver, the, for example, the autonomous software, uh, and they are, their technology um, being an autonomous driving software, is they, are not re uh, they have, don't have to rely on anybody else. Clearly, they need, have to have like customers, but um, also here, if they are the best in the market, they can steer that. Uh, to shape the future of computing devices. As mentioned before, a car is a computing device. Therefore, by entering this market, they definitely steer the future. 
um, and then coming to significant market contribution. There is a big problem. Um, the, if we look at being an automotive manufacturer, um, currently um, the market is very fractured with the biggest manufacturer in terms of unit being Toyota only having 9% market share last year um, and the 10 biggest automotive manufacturers taken together have only 50% of the whole worldwide market share. So this market is highly fractured, they won't get the same, um, the same amounts in terms of units sold compared to the uh, global economy as for iPhones for example. And another thing is Apple, in order to not damage their brand image, would probably produce an upper class car. Um, and the first company, which is a premium manufacturer within um, the biggest uh, car companies, is Mercedes. However, Mercedes has a worldwide market share of 2.9% in terms of unit. Uh, in terms of revenue, it is a bit higher. However, it is far away from what Apple is used to. As an automotive supplier, it's different. Um, there is currently four to five really big suppliers, um, and the more complex the software gets, um, the less suppliers will be there. So for autonomous driving software, they might not have a lot of um, a lot of comp competitors. Whereas compared to, for example, the interior with displays, there is a, if it's an easier business. There's definitely more competitors, but therefore they definitely have the significant market contribution. And also in terms of um, revenues or, and profits, um, we believe they can achieve quite high margins if they deliver an outstanding complex software, which the car makers um, have to rely on. In terms of technological capabilities, um, it is quite similar. Um, to be an automotive manufacturer, they don't have any know-how, they don't have a product available, um, in this case a car, um, they don't have any partnerships or customers for producing a car currently um, and they uh, don't have any know-how on how to manufacture a car nor have they research and development facilities in order to do a whole car. Um, for everything else there is the know-how. If they acquire a manufacturer or joint venture the automotive manufacturer will bring all the know-how. Um, However, also as an automotive supplier, um, we are convinced they have the know-how. Um, they know they have um, they have started researching, so there are some know-how on automotive driving. Um, uh, they have a product with um, CarPlay. Uh, they have partnerships and customers already, um, and um, they also have um, R&D facilities set up. And in terms of manufacturing, if they focus on the software. Um, it is not required and furthermore, probably, as it is usual in the automotive industry, you will deliver the software together with the, con uh, with the CPU, a controller, um, however this can be sourced out. They basically, they have to design um, the controller which they all already had to do for their test vehicles, the software needs to match the hardware um, and then they can just source it out and an expert company in manufacturing these devices can take over. So, the result, becoming an automotive manufacturer is definitely not a possibility. There's only 42% uh, of our um, criteria fulfilled, um, so this is really bad. Uh, then, uh, in third place, we have a joint venture. Uh, the, bad, the big point is in two points regarding the mission, to own the primary technologies and to have significant market contribution, um, they fail it. Therefore, if it doesn't comply to the mission and vision, uh, it is not a choice for Apple. Same as for acquiring a manufacturer, there won't be the significant market contribution. Uh, and so also here, it is compared to the, the other markets Apple operates in, it is not compliant, definitely not compliant with the mission. So we strongly believe Apple should not produce a car. Then. Um, Based on our evaluation and the research, 90% um, of the points are fulfilled for an automotive manufacturer. Um, it strongly complies to the vision and mission. Um, the only thing is, um, it is a new business model. But we believe um, Apple, such an innovative uh, company with so strong financial assets, um, they can acquire 
the know-how. They can buy the people um, they need um, to get to know the new business models for B2B. So we strongly believe entering as an automotive supplier is a good idea for Apple. Um, however, there's definitely further analysis required. And therefore, we have um, prepared Porter's five forces, um, spe especially for an autonomous software supplier. Um, why have we started with autonomous? Um, as said before, with this place, there's many competitors. They don't have as much of a high market share. Um, it would be if they want to run several projects, they could do it to establish relationships. Um, and another thing, connectivity. Um, we believe Apple is able to do it. However, there's also other players, not as many as for uh, this place, but there's also other players um, there that can, that are able um, to, uh, to, to uh, deliver the same, um, yeah, similar products. And also, it is not as innovative as, as automotive driving. They really, Apple really wants to like deliver the most innovative software. Um, so, uh, how does Portos Five Forces work? Um, we have we, the goal is to assess the competitive rivalry, um, and then there's several forces um, uh, in, uh, involved. There is for supplier power, so the suppliers they rely on. How strong are they? There's the threat of substitution that a company substitutes with a different product, the product Apple would deliver in this case. Then there is buyer power. How strong are the customers? It is different. Now there's like companies, um, the customer compared to private persons. So they might have a bit more power. And how big is the threat of a new entry? Is it possible that another company um, can enter and steal away a lot of market share from Apple? So, um, starting with the supplier power, uh, in this case, it would most likely be for the hardware on which the automotive, autonomous software runs. Um, there is a lot of suppliers of CPUs, um, the electronic control units. Um, so they have a choice. They can, if, if they, they can either rely on several suppliers or, yeah, it takes some time, but they can also, in case one supplier is uh, not um, is not willing to deliver the conditions they want, there is the possibility to change. Uh, one negative point though is it is expensive to change the supplier. However, after a while, once strong relationships are established, Apple has the financial assets and then they can rely on the suppliers. So if there is a change in the beginning required, we are sure Apple will handle it. Uh, furthermore, this is a very price competitive um, segment. Already, for every chips and electronic devices, it is so competitive that prices get lower and lower and lower. And a lot is produced in emerging markets um, where there is a price battle, and then there's other countries that might be able to deliver it um, cheaper. And Apple already has, a, has relations. Um, there is a lot of companies that manufacture the hardware for Apple, um, in, in which case um, they can in case these suppliers can also provide the corresponding hardware for automotive. It's more safety standards, but um, still, given that, they might have already strong relations to some suppliers. Uh, then, from the supplier power, moving to the buyer side. Um, the good thing is the market is fragmented. There's many customers. Um, Clearly, there are some more powerful ones, but they don't have to always rely on one um, buyer. So they will have, if, if there's not many players in the business of supplying autonomous driving software, uh, they are not as powerful. Um, a problem is though, there is premium to cheap. So for a cheap segment, margins are always less because the cars must be provided very, very cheap. Uh, and therefore also the software cannot be that, uh, that um, uh, that expensive, which makes the um, buyer a lot more powerful, especially the premium ones, because they know the cheap ones are getting charged less. Uh, this means the customers are very price sensitive. However, a good point is the prices are very stable. Uh, if we look at the car market, um, apart from currency changes, um, like inflation for example, the prices are very, very stable in the car market. 
and therefore also the prices for the suppliers. And they have this in this case a supplier. Um, then, uh, what could happen if there's a new entry? Can another company, a startup, enter this market? Uh, the, ample, uh, the entry is crazy complex. To, to develop such a software takes years. Probably, or very sure, more than 10 years. So it will be really tough for competitors to enter. And also, as per Apple's financial situation, um, they can easily um, either buy the competitor in an early stage or uh, counteract. Uh, the research is very timely. Um, there is a lot of patents. Um, keeping competitors away from entering the markets, especially in the early years. Uh, and the customer relationships are very strong. It is a um, product which, is con con uh, which concerns people's safety. Uh, so this means if the, if the um, uh, manufacturers are happy with the suppliers, if the prices are okay, um, then the relationship is strong, the trust is there. Automotive manufacturers will have a hard time to change. Also, their automotive manufacturers and automotive suppliers work really closely together, which means it is a, definitely a big um, benefit if the customers know how the suppliers work. A new supplier might work different, which will, have a, which will provide a lot of troubles in the beginning, so the automotive manufacturers really do not want to change. Uh, then coming to the threat of substitution of the autonomous driving software. Um, in general, the autonomous driving software can hardly be replaced. Um, there is not more than having an autonomous car. Um, it is autonomous, it, it cannot be that much, it cannot be improved. Um, rather, um, the vehicles themselves can be replaced. For example, if Apple would focus on passenger cars, and let's hypothetically say all passenger cars are exchanged by motorcycles in the future, um, then they need to definitely need to adapt and provide a system for motorcycles. However, um, the, the system they provide, the autonomous driving software, it can easily be provided for other vehicles that drive on our streets. Another thing is there's many companies researching, for example, um, flying devices, sometimes labeled as flying cars, um, which are definitely different. Um, there is many more factors acting on it. However, this would also be interesting to adapt their software um, to these new vehicles. And if they are already the best in autonomous driving software, they will have a big advantage of supplying this software for other devices, for other um, kinds of vehicles. Then, the last of the five forces is competitive rivalry. Um, this means um, how many um, competitors or how strong are the competitors, especially delivering that product. Um, usually, um, the, as the product is so complex um, and as the automotive manufacturers don't want um, too many suppliers to keep the research prices low, they ra usually have three to four big suppliers. Um, and yeah, they, they, however, they don't want less because there shall be some competition. So the automotive manufacturer will always check that there's not one um, supplier in the market that only delivers the product in order to not be dependent on them. Then, the suppliers of such a complex system are usually large corporations, uh, which makes it even more difficult for smaller companies to enter or get involved in that business. Uh, the product is very unique and cost-stable, cost um, uh, which is also good Probably every um, supplier has to settle on a similar price with smaller differences um, due, to, uh, due to their overall features and how, how good, good the software works. Are there even more features um, Apple could provide, innovative features? Um, it is a high quality product, it's high safety. Um, if it is not safe, um, it will not be um, uh, released. The government, will, government regulations will hinder the companies to release an unsafe software on the roads. And the other thing is the loyal customers. Um, usually the suppliers will split the market apart um, and every automotive manufacturer 
will rely on one or maybe two automotive suppliers for the same product, uh, as this makes it cheaper for the automotive manufacturers. So, uh, in order that this is so, the signs are good that Apple could enter the uh, auto automotive industry as a supplier of software. However, doesn't make sense in terms of financials. Therefore, it is really tough to estimate. There is um, many, for example, consultancies or uh, big companies estimating what will be the market size for autonomous drive. Therefore, we have combined data from different sources and validated that our numbers roughly go in the right um, direction. However, still it is hard to estimate. Um, we estimated costs for R&D and a fleet cost for testing um, based on what um, a buy more spend, so um, Google's um, subsidiary for uh, developing and testing autonomous vehicles. Uh, we came up that in a five year time frame, uh, Vimo spent roughly one billion um, uh, dollars. However, this was from 2009 to 2050, um, and the costs are likely to go up the closer the product gets to series. Um, so, to be sure that we are not estimating um, less than is sufficient. Um, we doubled the amount to have some safety um, and change it to 2 billion. And then furthermore, Google or Vimo is currently investing in a um, fleet um, to provide in the end ride services. Uh, however, this is also necessary in order to test um, on public streets and gather data. Autonomous driving will be dependent on gathering a lot of data before it can be deployed. Therefore, massive amounts of vehicles and massive miles driven are necessary. Um, Vimo bought, for example, 62,000 um, Chrysler minivans and 22,000 um, Jaguar vehicles. Not all are yet um, delivered and um, equipped with uh, the sensors required. Um, and however, already ordered, it's huge amounts they spent. Uh, Google spent exactly 4 billion on both projects. Roughly, um, so we expect also as the cars must be replaced to be up to date every five years, the fleet must be renewed for four billion year dollars. So this is a, a big amount. Uh, so these are the costs. Uh, now here's a graph. The orange line represents the cost, which goes up linearly from 2025 to 2035. Then we estimate what can Apple make as per profits apart from R and D expenses and the testing expenses. Uh, the market worth by 2025 will be 26 billion, according to several studies. Um, the numbers roughly match, however, there's always variations a bit up and down, but that's what we took as a base. And the market growth is estimated to be between 2019 and 2026 annually, around 39%. Um, we made an assumption that the market will keep growing at this rate. It might even accelerate. Um, we compared this value um, to other studies from other consultancies, um, automotive manufacturers, and they match roughly the not final numbers the other companies expected, for example, to, um, to be there in 2035. Uh, the market share in terms of revenues, uh, there won't be many competitors, three to four, um, so we estimated at 30% if Apple really can deliver the product. Um, there are several st studies stating that um, Vimo um, will, as they are so far advanced, have like a market share of like 60%. Uh, however, um, let's see, if there's like a tech giant like Apple entering, this might change. And then there's yeah, maybe three to four companies um, making up for the entire market. And that's how, how we came up with the 30%. An estimated profit margin based on costs for hardware, um, uh, which, is, um, uh, yeah, which is usually required for flashing the software and for delivering the product to the automotive manufacturer. Um, there's usually quite good profit margins now in the automotive industry. Not as good as with, the, with iPhones because it's cost sensitive. But then the profit margins, um, as per the cost of goods sold, should be around 15 to 25%. We did our calculations um, with the average of 20%. Um, this gave us an estimated um, profits, for example, by 2025, if Apple already has a product available, 
um, which might be, for example, just a lane assist or a highway assist hand which drives all the numbers on the on the highway, which should be possible in eleven years with uh, seven years. So in total eleven years of research as they started in twenty forty. Um, so we estimate first profits there uh, of one point five billion. Um, before that. Um, it will take a while to get the research done, get the certifications, and be allowed to deploy the software in the field. Um, that's why before that, Apple should not expect revenues. And then um, we just um, let, let these revenues go grow with the um, market growth. Uh, we transferred this in the graph down here as the blue line. Um, uh, we see, at, for example, at 2035, um, we estimated roughly a bit more than 40 um, billion dollars of profits, um, which fits to other um, other reports, which say that the um, annual profits in the sector sh should be around between um, 100 and 200 um, billion. Um, and so, with like the market share of 30 percent, that fits quite well. However, we don't know how, or nobody knows how good um, these estimations of um, companies are who like spend. Um, big amounts of time investigating that and doing the estimations. And therefore we get a break-even point um, a little bit before 2032. So it is definitely a long-term investment, but it will grow exponentially. Um, however, then um, at some point the market will be, um, uh, there will be, there won't be more vehicles being equipped or the, the vehicles equipped with autonomous software won't be growing. So at some point the curve will definitely slow down, but definitely it is estimated the market for autonomous um, software grows longer than this. Um, besides that, um, we also um, uh, drew, draw the, drew the graph for Apple's classic business, so with smartphones, computers, the profits for this. Um, this is on a different scale though. Um, for example, it starts at 100 billion and goes up to um, nearly 250 billion. So it's um, roughly, um, let's say, like five times the amount of the revenue from autonomous driving. Um, but as we see, um, Apple's profits rise slower than um, the profits from the autonomous driving business, which means an accelerated growth for Apple. Um, and therefore, even though by um, 2035, it would just be 16% of the total revenue. It is already a huge part with a good perspective for the future. Um, and yeah, therefore, the conclusion is definitely there is a market. Apple has the capabilities to do that, and Apple should invest in deploying autonomous driving software. Uh, therefore, uh, we proposed an execution. How can Apple start and tackle this big task? Uh, first of all, Apple has to focus on the product and develop it. There is no product yet which can be sold. Um, so Apple should focus, in our opinion, mainly on the autonomous driving software. However, also other possibilities to enter the market and build relationships to the automotive manufacturers should be considered. For example, cloud or connectivity applications or human-machine interface solutions like screens. Um, in order to build a relationship uh, and then later on make it easier um, to sell the autonomous driving software, uh, which will give the biggest profits and revenues. Uh, the market is rapidly changing, so the development must be started depending on where Apple is at that point or speed it up immediately. Um, if Apple is late in this market and there's other um, suppliers which can and provide the automotive manufacturers and autonomous driving software, Apple will have a hard time entering because there will already be a customer relationship established. Uh, but yeah, that's the next point. Apple should start right away to establish more partnerships and customer relations. Um, this might be, for example, partnerships um, with automo other automotive suppliers um, to maybe, let's say, share know-how, test together with the focus on later on being the the only um, supplier of this product, so here we got to be careful. But over the automotive suppliers, in which the automotive manufacturers trust, um, a strong relationship could already build, be built up front with the automotive um, manufacturers. Um, also, um, yeah, with the customers directly, so the automotive manufacturer, more partnerships should be started. 
uh, for example, testing um, with the automotive manufacturers of vehicles, like Apple is already doing with VW. Um, but this definitely, this engagement must go on with more manufacturers, and this will make it in the long, long term easier to sell software to the um, manufacturers. And then a third very, very important point Apple must pertain the, uh, obtain the premium brand perception also in the future. It definitely must not damage the original business. So Apple must be very sure on what they are doing. There shall not be negative news, like for example with Uber, there were a few steady incidents, and this might harm the strong brand image of Apple of being excellent. Um, or for example, if they deliver infotainment systems, although it's price competitive, Apple should definitely not deliver low price products which don't live up to the expectations. Um, yeah. This um, is our final slide. Um, so we, in summary, we strongly recommend enter the market, especially of autonomous driving software. It is, a, it is difficult, but definitely Apple has the financial means to do it. They have the know-how to do it, and they definitely should do it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If there's further questions, just get in touch with us. Um, we are um, team six from section C. Thank you very much.